I've been debating in a long time what to make today's video about, but I think I finally have a good idea. Today, we're going to be talking about the power, the art of speaking and learning how to speak effectively. Not many people know this, and the ones that do are often very far ahead. But the ones that don't are far, far, far further behind than they think. But not a lot of people know, not a lot of people realise. The way that you speak, your tone, the words you use, and how you say them, make a huge difference to the atmosphere that you give off. The vibe that you go off. While words do matter, we've all heard the, the saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That is very true. If you say something confidently, you're going to give off a confident vibe. If you say something slowly, you'll give off a confident vibe. If you say something fast and high pitched, you'll give off a weak, scared vibe. So the ones that don't know this lesson ultimately end up suffering a lot, but those who do thrive. <coughs> your words, your tone, <coughs> the things you say are your superpower and you can use them to create mystery. You can use them to make people feel things. You can you can do a lot with words. Words go a long way. And that goes for both ways, good and bad. But today we're talking about how you can use your words, your speech, your talking, your art of conversation. To put yourself in the best possible position. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so the first mistake that people make is talking too fast and too often. Talking too fast, first of all, gives you a, give, gives the impression you're not securing yourself. And... You're nervous, you're not comfortable in your own skin. This is not a very good aura to put on. So you need to learn to talk slowly. Now, not extremely slowly to the point where people are angry, but slower. Slow yourself down, especially when you're speaking in front of a group. Speaking from experience is that when you speak fast, it shows you that you're nervous. It shows other people you're scared. And it's okay to be scared, but you don't want to show that if you can help it, especially if you're talking to a girl and you find attractive. <clears throat> you want to talk slowly. Slow down. This will show that you're comfortable in yourself, you're confident in your own skin, and you own the room. Now, speaking slowly is one thing, but speaking too much is a different thing. Speaking too much, again, shows that, shows neediness. So for me, I have a rule, I will not speak unless I'm spoken to. If I'm not spoken to, generally I don't speak. I will have a conversation with people, I will initiate conversation. But if I'm not spoken to after, I don't carry on. This will show you, show other people that you're in charge. Next is your, your lexicon. Now the lexicon that you use will give a huge impression to other people. And for those of you who don't know what a lexicon is, your lexicon is essentially the language, the words that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now we all have a base lexicon, our conscious lexicon, which is, I'm not sure how many words exactly, but it's the words that you would just use day to day without thinking about it. And then we have our subconscious lexicon, 
which is a lot more deeper. Again, I don't know how many words, but it's just the kind of go-to words you'd use. By expanding your lexicon, you will... Well, you'll give off an interesting vibe. Some people will notice, some people won't, in my experience. But it ultimately... It just makes you come across as more classy, more elegant with the way that you speak. People will be impressed. Generally, I think you'll either get two kinds of people. You'll get people who are like, decide to make a joke and think it's funny, whatever, ignore them. But you'll also get the people who are impressed, curious, because they're like, what does this word mean? What does that word mean? How did you learn these words? And some people will be impressed to the point where they even start using them themselves. But you want to use your speech. Whereby it gives you a position of power. That's what you want. And power comes from mystery. Yeah. I'd say... Mysteriousness definitely does give you power. Maybe it doesn't come from mysteriousness, but it definitely does give you power. <clears throat> because at that point, people are coming to you. And next, last but not least, my third tip is being in control of the conversation. If you're talking to a girl, this is mainly in context. Girls asking you all sorts of questions. Oh, so what did you do this weekend? How was your day? What are you doing tonight? full answers it was stupid man answers whereas a wise man a smart man a man with intention understands that that's not where this conversation is going i know where this conversation is going to go i know where i want this conversation to go and i'm in charge of it this is the way we're going you don't do that by answering every single one of the questions Speaking less, not answering her questions, not being rude, but not answering every single one of her questions will give you a very, very powerful hand because she's going to build up an image of you in her head. She's going to see, say you're talking on social media, which is most likely the case. She's going to see the pictures that you're posting, the stories that you're posting, and she's going to build up an image of you in her head. She's going to be very attracted to that. Very attracted. Because she doesn't know the picture, and that's going to frustrate her because she's going to want to know it more. Those are the three most effective things I've learned in conversation important things to create a mysterious atmosphere a powerful atmosphere of yourself if you enjoyed this video click this button here so we'll subscribe you to my channel and if you want to see more content click this video here i'll see you tomorrow